Hey everyone, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be working with the new collaboration from Sizzix and 49 and Market that was given to me by scrapbook.com. We're going to make a really beautiful, elegant, yet still kind of grungy card. I'm really excited to show you how. We'll be starting with the painted pencil leaves stamps, and you can see them there. And we've got Versamark ink, and then liquid platinum and gold embossing powders from Ranger, as well as black mixed media paper from scrapbook.com. It's nice and smooth, nice and dark, it's fabulous. So here I'm just going to pull out the two stamps that we're going to be working with at the moment. It's the outline stamp and then kind of that deconstructed foliage. This is the card that I made right before this video that inspired this video. I, I really love how it came out, so I figured I would show all of you how to do it yourselves. We're gonna do a slightly different layout just to keep things interesting, but I, I thought it was really cool. I love how it's grungy yet elegant. Those embossing powders really kick up the style a few notches and it, I don't know, I just had a really good time making it. And, and if you don't have gold and liquid platinum, envision other colors that you may wanna use and try this technique with what embossing powders you have at home. I'm double stamping this. It's a brand new stamp set. I had only just used it for that other card. Um, and it's a good idea to condition your stamps when you first get them. I just may not have conditioned it super well, but you can see there that it's stamped just perfectly. It's nice and deconstructed. The image is clear and we can just move on to the next stamping. Look at how nice this is going to look. I, I love this layout already. We're just going to stamp it one more time. So you may have noticed that my embossing powder labels are not the same as the ones that scrapbook.com have in their store. That's because these are, these are vintage bottles. These are really old, but they're exactly the same product that are listed in the description box below. So if you want to grab these colors for yourself, make sure you click the more in the description box and it will open up and show you the... Uh, the links to all of the items that I've used today, as well as the accompanying blog posts that I've got. So I dumped liquid platinum all over this, and now we're going to just use a brush to kind of get rid of any of that excess that may be here and there. Honestly, with this particular card, you don't need to go crazy because we're going to be splattering and, and adding, you know, Lots of powder all over the place. So if you have a few stray, excuse me, granules, not a big deal, but if you want it to be perfect, then just go in with a small brush and just kind of brush them away. You can also use an anti-static powder bag if you've got one. I just didn't use mine today for some reason. So I'm gonna put this back into my Misty stamping tool and now I have the outline stamp. So we're gonna just lay this right on top. And what's really cool is that it's very easy to line up these stamps with each other, but it also looks really cool if they're not perfectly lined up. So play around with it. If, you, if you're somebody that really likes to have them perfectly aligned, you should have no trouble doing that yourself. But if you want them to be a little off kilter and have a little bit more visual interest, then you know have it, have it off slightly and it's gonna look really cool. In this case, I decided to really try to line them up as best as I could, um, but in the future, I'll probably wind up misaligning them on purpose and it's gonna look really nice too. I'm using some isopropyl alcohol to clean off my stamp. Versamark ink is very sticky. That is so that it holds the embossing powder when you dump it on top, but it can be kind of annoying to clean off. I find that just using water isn't necessarily the best thing to do. So isopropyl works for me. There are plenty of stamp cleaners out in the market that you can use as well. Use what works for you. So I got a lot of gold in some places that I didn't want it, so I'm just kind of brushing that away. I just use a piece of scrap paper to um, dump it back in. Some people use coffee filters. Now here you wanna be careful. I, I let my heat gun heat up really well off camera before I took it to the mixed media paper because I don't want to remelt that liquid platinum embossing powder. It might happen a little bit, but if you're careful, and you kind of keep the embossing gun moving, then it really shouldn't remelt that liquid platinum. But look at how cool that looks with that gold on top of the platinum. And I liked this color in particular, that platinum, as opposed to silver, because it's a little, a little dirtier, a little grungier. Um, it's not as shiny as a silver might be, and I, I really thought that that would work out well for these cards that I made. So I grabbed one of the splatters, and I'm just kind of free, free range stamping around those leaves. And I'm going back in with the platinum 
to emboss all of it. This whole card is embossed, which is so cool. We're not coloring anything except for part of the sentiment. You'll see that later. But you can really work magic with embossing powder. So I'm just going to dump that back in. A lot of repeat embossing here, but it's worth it. It's so worth it because the card is so elegant in the end. So now we're just going to heat that up. And again, you want to make sure that your embossing gun is nice and hot when you bring it to the mixed media paper so that you don't accidentally remelt anything that you've already melted on the card. So I grabbed a smaller splatter now. And here, right there, I just kind of wiped some of it off just because I didn't want that whole big blob to be there because I didn't want it to be on top of the leaves. So you just wipe it off with your finger. You can use a stamp chamois, whatever you want, but I find it just easier to use my finger. And now with these splatters, I'm going to go in with the gold. So we're just going back and forth between the two colors and we're gonna have a really cool looking card. I know I keep saying it, but I'm excited. <laughs> I don't usually do quite so much heat embossing, but I have to say, and I've said this before in videos, this is my favorite technique ever. I will never tire of heat embossing. It's so magical looking. Just watching those dull, almost black colors come to life, and then some of them shine, and some of them have glitter, and it's just, I don't know, it's it's magical, even though I know the science behind it. <laughs> It's always fun and magical. It's just, it's my favorite thing to do. As much as I love other techniques, embossing, heat embossing will always be at the top of my list for sure. And look at that. Isn't that cool? I love it. I love it so much. All right. So now we have the Hello You Sentiments. This is part of the new collection as well. And I grabbed just the Celebrate. And I have a scrap piece of vellum from my stash. And I'm going to stamp it with Versamark ink again, and I'm just trying to line that up with the top, but I'm giving myself, as you can see, a big gap. And the reason for that is because we're gonna go in with the Tonic and Tim Holtz Deckel Trimmer later and trim that down. And I wanted to make sure that it was far enough away from the words where the, the edge, the fancy edge that it gives, won't interfere with the word. Here I should have totally used some uh, anti-static powder but I didn't, so I brought the brush back in and cleaned it up a little bit. But this is another time where you want to be really careful. Look at the magic. Look at how shiny that gets. Really careful with when you're heating up your vellum. Um, make sure that that heat tool is nice and hot before you bring it over to the vellum so that it doesn't warp too much or melt it or anything like that. So here, I'm showing you that I'm lining the top of the letters up with that clear plastic edge, and that's making sure that I'm straight and that I can have the same width of a border around all of the letters. So that's a fun way to do things. I, I do that a lot, no matter which of the tonic trimmers that I'm using, because I have the straight edge as well. I like to line up those letters or images, what have you, with that clear plastic edge so that everything is nice and even. So I just grabbed the black brush marker from scrapbook.com and I had primed this beforehand because I had used it on the other card that I showed at the beginning of the video. And you're just going to very carefully color in those letters if you choose to, you don't have to, but I thought that this would really make it stand out quite a bit. So this is a brand new marker for me and I, I started to make a little bit of a mess. So off camera, I wiped it down because I had a blob that was happening, but that's because I had squeezed it a little too much. And then I filled in the rest of the letters and then I heat set them because it takes a while for this stuff to dry simply because it's on vellum. If it was just on regular cardstock, it would have dried pretty much immediately. So make sure that you use that heat tool. But again, don't have it concentrated in one area for too long because you'll remelt that gold embossing powder. And then you'll kind of have to start over again. So just be careful and make sure that that black marker has dried really well. So I decided to use a top folding card base, which I don't do all the time, but I thought it would be nice with the way I wanted to lay out this card. And check out this holographic mirror paper, paper pad from scrapbook.com. Is that fabulous or what? And at first I thought I was going to go with silver, but again, I, I used the liquid platinum because I wanted it to be a little dirtier, a little grungier, and the silver was just a little too bright. So I grabbed the same 
mirror finish gold that I used on the first card. And wow, that is quite a reflection that we have going there. <laughs> and I just used a rectangle die from my stash to cut out the middle because we don't want to waste it. You can keep it solid if you want to, but I'm going to wind up using that fabulous gold on something else eventually. So now I've got my Barely Arts glue. This is also what I used for the vellum before. And I'm going to just apply this right to my card base, being really careful so that I line it up. Typically when I make cards, if you watch my channel or have visited my blog before, I tend to leave a gap so that this way I can add color in some way to the card base with inks or sprays or something like that. But here, I thought that that mirror paper would be really perfect. So also with this card that's a little different from the first one, I decided that I wanted to have some dimension. So I grabbed some black foam tape. This is from Thermoweb. This stuff is fantastic. And I am just going to apply it all around the back of the card so that we've got some dimension. That first card, I just glued directly with the Barely Arts glue. There's no dimension to it, but I thought that I would go, you know, a little bit more extreme with this one. We're playing around, we're having a good time, and I. I really love that extra dimension that we've got from this foam tape. It cuts really nicely. The release paper comes off well. So if you are in need of black foam tape, they have white as well. Um, but if you need black, which is kind of hard to find, I highly recommend this paper. So now you can see that I'm really not struggling to get this paper off. I'm going to wind up grabbing my pokey tool just to show you that that is another option if you want to do that to remove the release paper. But either way, it, it comes off really nicely. So we're just going to lift up the edge there with the pokey tool and then lift it away with our fingers. Super easy to do. Again, all of the supplies that I used will be listed below in my description box if you'd like to check them out for yourself. So now deep breath. We're going to stick that down, make sure it's centered. And look at that. Look at that beautiful dimension. It just it gives it some some real panache, I guess. <laughs> I love how these cards came out. I hope that you do too. Break out your embossing powders and play with them. Look at that shine, you guys. Not just from the gold paper, but also from all of that embossing. They're just beautiful. I'm super happy with them. And I hope that you give this a try. If you do, make sure you show it to me. Tag me in a post somewhere and, and I'd love to see them. So thank you again to scrapbook.com for sending this gorgeous collection to me. I am totally obsessed with it. And I hope that the rest of you that are watching are as well. It's a lot of fun to play with. I'll be back real soon with another video. Be well, stay safe, peace out.